This video is about spirit-led witnessing. No one can bear good fruit without walking in the spirit. These are works given to us by God, for Jesus created us and saved us for good works that we should walk in them. He gave us the commission to go and disciple all nations. The fundamental thing required of all believers is to witness for him and know his word. The Spirit will open doors for you, and you need to be under the Spirit and watch for the doors that open. Ask the Spirit to help you bear good fruit. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Paul was led by the Spirit. Doors closed, doors open. He went wherever the Spirit led him. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in chains, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened to me by the Lord. Opening a discussion about Jesus with a stranger is not an easy task. This is why you need to follow God and watch for the Spirit to open doors. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Without the Holy Spirit, I myself could not speak boldly because it's easy to be overcome with fear. In my experience, most people that I meet have a wonderful testimony of Jesus, but they don't share it with others for fear. Even in their own church, they don't share. And there are non-believing pastors who reject testimonies. The Spirit will give you boldness if you cooperate with Him. Peter became bold after receiving the Spirit. Pray for boldness and submit to the Spirit. Without Him, you cannot bear good fruit. Pray and ask for an open door. The open door presents itself as the Spirit prompts the stranger to share something personal. Work with the Spirit. Look for the door. It's an opportunity to tell a person about Jesus and His Word. Here are some personal examples. I met someone at a fast food place who was in a church group meeting there. He noticed the Jesus hat that I was wearing and I shared my testimony. But strangely, he rejected it and told me I was making things up. I didn't take this personally because I'm used to being laughed at by non-believers. So I got up and I was preparing to leave. But then... He was prompted to share that he didn't believe hell. A door was open. It opened another discussion, so I told him I didn't believe him because I personally met people who went there. Immediately, he was convicted. This 50-ish churchgoer got very fearful and started crying. He asked me if I thought he was going to go there, and I didn't answer him. I just repeated the fact that I have met people who have died, come back, and they went to hell. Jesus brought them back and gave them a second chance. This is fact. All one has to do is ask people who went there. And I left them with a gospel track. Reflecting back, I believe it was the Spirit convicting him of sin and telling him, Hell is real. He got very afraid. I've never seen a grown man cry like that. The Spirit convicts the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. It's in the Bible. Number two, I had a person who shared he was having a bad day. I kept quiet and listened to what he had to say. This was an open door. He shared his mother had recently died and he had to kick his sister out of home because she was using drugs. He was undergoing all kinds of stress issues and feeling all by himself. Then I shared Jesus with him and he started crying uncontrollably. He had met Jesus when he was a small child, 
and had an open vision of him reaching out to him. He thanked me for ministering to him. I didn't even understand what that meant at the time. All I knew is I had an opportunity to tell him he wasn't alone. Jesus was there. Jesus is medicine, and he felt blessed. Number three. I met another person who was taking anti-anxiety medications. I listened to her, and then she shared an open door that she's divorcing. Her husband left her for another woman and is marrying her. Though she was an unbeliever, I told her about Jesus and what the Bible says about divorce and remarriage. I shared with her that she needs to pray for her husband because he's following the wrong path to destruction. Surprisingly, she thanked me for ministering to her and that she will talk to her aunt, who is a believer. You see, I have no experience in counseling at all, but I just told her about Jesus and what the Word said about her situation. I believe it was the Spirit ministering to her and even drawing her to Jesus. Number four, a new co-worker who just came to Christ started confessing multiple sins once he found out I was a believer. Open door. The Spirit convicts the world of sin, John 16, 8. This person came to Christ recently and began confessing. He lived with his girlfriend of 20 plus years and had children out of wedlock. His girlfriend doesn't want to marry him and is fine just living with him. But he was bothered by his fornication so badly it was interfering with work. I told him he needed to address this problem and repent. He can't stay in fornication. This person did not listen but continued in months in conviction. Soon after, someone else showed up to minister to him. She said God sent her there, but she didn't know why. And he quickly began confessing to her. And she told him he needed to be married or end the relationship. This confirmed to me that God is hard at work trying to save people. And he will bring others to help you in your calling. Some plant, others water. He will send help. Number five. A Buddhist donut shop owner became a believer. Now I witnessed this person and told him all about Jesus. He didn't believe my testimony and he was very amused. But there were others in the donut shop who had heard the testimony. And John felt like he had to give his. John stood up and told everyone he was undergoing dialysis and he died. He came out of his body and met Jesus. Jesus told him it was not his time and sent him back into his body. He walked around the donut shop telling everyone he saw holes in his wrists. Some plant, others water. God had someone there to help out. The donut shop owner was shell-shocked. He later asked me how to pray, and I left him a Bible. 2 Timothy 1.8 says, Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me as prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel, according to the power of God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our own works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, apostle, and teacher of the Gentiles. Summary Jesus called us to the harvest of souls, and he told us he would be with us to the end of time. You need, you need him to bear good fruit. Be led by the Holy Spirit in all you do, and you will bear much good fruit. God bless.